Here we have the new Rapido Trains Later Phase F40. As you can see, the ski train specific box. And this is number 289 with ditch lights. So to get these things open, you have a couple of pieces of tape here. Just tear open like that. And you just pull the, in pull the box out like you normally would. Nice shiny box. Open it up. You have the operation manual. There's one side with um, English and the other side is French. They meet in the middle. One's upside down compared to the other so you don't, you know, get confused. Like I did when I opened it up the first time and everything was in French. Parts list. Exploded parts diagram. Should be able to pause and zoom in. If not, I apologize. Stickers. Again, more stickers. Cool. Like stickers. Ooh. So shiny. <laughs> and there she is. Just an additional parts bag with an extra air horn. And I think those are some sort of, I don't, I'm not going to pretend to know what those are. They're something. They're additional something. Or extra somethings. Do not know. I'm not going to lie, I've had my other models open due to a uh, error I made. I ended up ordering six of these things. So, I've noticed that in the models there are a few detail pieces that come loose, like the air hose lines on the front of the engine here. As you can see, they look okay, but the other side is missing. They're in the box still. They're down here, but packaging is does let certain parts fall off. I don't know why. Paint seems decent, though. No scratches, no nicks, no no problems there. There you go. I'll get some close-ups here in a minute. Just thought I'd pop in to say that most of these detail parts, they have a couple pins that usually sit in the frame or something. There's a couple holes, just press it into, and they click back in. They might need a little bit of glue. I know these air hose lines here probably need a little bit of glue because they do move around quite a bit. Um, another thing I saw... In all of my models that I bought, I don't know what these are, but uh, yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of them loose in the box. Uh, I think for this one, there's three or four of them loose in the box, so I'll see if I can figure out where those go. Now, due to the ordering mistakes I have made, there will be links down in the description to eBay links to the extra models that I ordered, including this one, because uh, I already have three of them that have already been put down on the track and everything. So I'm just going to put all the little missing detail parts inside this detail bag here, and whoever buys it, well, um, if, if I figure out where they go, I will send you a message on eBay letting you know where they go. So, thank you. Here you see my lack of a turntable, so I have to just drag my camera. Ignoring that, the details on this locomotive are absolutely amazing. But please note that some of the rubber detail parts around the fuel tank have a tendency of falling off, and I can confirm that is what I found laying around in the boxes. Here we go, we have it down on the track with track power applied. First thing that comes on is the ground inspection light and the number boards on the front of the locomotive. 
We will now hit function A to start the locomotive. This model is running a Loke Sound 5 decoder, so unless you hit function 8, it will not receive any commands. Most other sound functions will continue to work, but it will not move until you hit function 8 and actually start the locomotive. Function 0 turns on the headlights. Function 6 turns on the ditch lights. Function 1 turns on the bell, which also turns on the beacons on the roof, which can also be turned on with function 13, if you want to have the beacons on full time without the bell. Here's the horn. Using the horn will cause the ditch lights to flash if turned on. Function 3 is apparently a Doppler horn. Did not know that. Function 4 is the head and power standby mode. This brings the locomotive up to approximately notch 6. This function is used with function 5 to simulate head and power on the locomotive closest to the passenger cars. I will now hit function 5 to run it from standby to run mode, which will bring the locomotive from about notch 6 up to notch 8. This is due to how EMD designed the head end power on these units. It had to be running at maximum power to operate the massive alternator at the correct speed to produce the 480 volt head end power system to run in the passenger cars. So we'll go ahead and turn that off by hitting function 5, which will bring it back into standby mode. And we hit function 4 to bring it out of standby mode into normal mode. If you're running this with a passenger train, only the rear unit, or the unit closest to the passenger cars, has to be running this. So if it's just one F40 and a passenger train, you will have to run the head end power. Well, if you want to simulate what happens in real life. If you don't use that, the locomotive will function as a normal freight diesel would, with regular notching as you throttle up. Speaking of, we'll put it in speed step one so you can hear the engine. That's your verse. Six percent throttle down to zero, and we will back it up and go up to six again, just so you can. I do one percent in reverse. This engine runs very smooth. I have broken this one in. This is one of the units that I am keeping, so I have already broken it in and ran it for a couple hours. Yeah. Anyway. You know what? I just realized something. I could be telling you how fast this is going in with 1% throttle. Hold on. Here we go. Notch 1. 1% throttle. Just entered the speedometer. Point 0.8 miles an hour. That is really not bad. Especially since other models I've seen. 
at notch one go about three miles an hour. So that is really good. Congratulations, Rapido, with another fantastic low speed running locomotive. If any of you realized in the video that the side frames on the trucks were incorrect, well, you'd be correct. Rapido just put out in a newsletter today that the side frames are incorrect on all of the F40 models and they will be sending replacements or offering replacements for free sometime in the future. In order to receive the side frames, you will need to get in contact with Rapido using their contact form on their website. I will leave a link in the description. I will say these locomotives are just as good, if not better, than I had hoped they would be. I've ran them for six, five, six hours maybe, non-stop. There's been no derailments, there haven't been any jolting, any loss of power. These locomotives run beautifully, they look, they look wonderful. They're just fantastic models. I would highly suggest picking some up if you haven't already and have an excuse to. Uh, sounds like they may be running more ski train tempos in the future, like near future, because they've already had interest in running more ski train. So now might be a good time to pick up some locomotives if you'd like the train, the full set, in the future. But for now, I'll let the locomotives do the talking, and I'll see y'all next time. Enjoy the run -bys.
Throughout the review, you've heard a clicking noise every time I do anything with the locomotive. I sincerely apologize. That is my DCC controller. I use a Dizitrax wireless controller, and every time you do an input, it makes a noise. Until now. I figured out there was a setting for that. I've now turned it off. So, yay. Anyways, see y'all next time.